Hey guys, it's DC here and today we're going to be talking about why I freelance in cybersecurity. This is a question that comes through to me quite often where people ask me like, you went from a job, a full-time job working in cybersecurity, you were getting paid really well and you know, why would you then risk all of that to freelance in cybersecurity? The ultimate answer here is because I wanted to travel. I wanted to be able to figure out a solution where I could keep working but also travel around, see the different parts of the world, see you know what excitement is out there that I could uh, explore and you know figure out for myself. Setting up a freelance consultancy doing cybersecurity services was absolutely no easy task. I have to emphasize this point. It did take me a long time to work towards a solution and getting clients and you know building an income and a recurring income which is what I mostly focus on as far as services are concerned to be able to achieve this dream of mine. I had issues with, and I think a lot of people have this similar sort of predicament where they were going into a job every single day. You work from you know, 8 o'clock, 8.30, whatever it is, until 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock, sometimes later you're doing uh, weekend calls, after hour calls, sometimes you're working in a 24 hour SOC. And ultimately for me, this became so repetitive, so boring that I really wanted to pursue other areas of cybersecurity within my own skill set, of course, and to be able to do these things remotely. The key point was remotely outside of Australia. Now, sure, most of my clients, 99% of them are Australian businesses. And I have a, a benefit here where I am an Australian. I was working in Australia and I was bringing in clients from Australia to work on remotely. Now, when I talked with these clients, I said, hey, I'm going to be working on these projects and, and different services that I'm offering you remotely. However, I can have someone come in to help if you need. But that was like a, a long-term burn. Most of the projects that I was actually doing were things that you can do remotely. For example, a pen test or security compliance report. So seeing these services as potential remote services that I could offer, I thought, okay, if I package these correctly, if I bring in enough clients, then I can continue to pay all of my bills. Like everyone else, I have bills. I have things to pay for. I have mortgages, I have loans. I have all these things that I need to keep paying for, of course, because I mean, that's just part of life. You have to pay the bills. So figuring out how many services, how many clients, what I would price those services at, and you know how much of that I needed to do to be able to uh, keep paying my obligations while still being able to travel, which in itself is quite an expensive task. Flights and hotels are not cheap. Was the sort of the ultimate goal here to, to work and to figure out. I'm going on around one year of fully remote freelancing services now without having another job to back up my finances. And at the start, it was extremely stressful. I have to say it was very stressful to uh, to meet those obligations because you know, I, was, I was out and about. I was spending more money than I normally would and I still had to pay all of these bills. But I find that for me anyway, if I put myself in a situation where I kind of have to make things work, then I will make things work. So since then, I've brought in a lot more clients. I've offered more solutions for those clients and that's exactly what I'm trying to help people to learn through the Safer Internet Project. The members of the Safer Internet Project come in for a fortnightly freelancing workshop where we go over different tactics to sell different services, to outreach to clients, to, to actually bring in those clients and to do the work. And helping other people to find their happy ground, their, their level ground of how to actually do these things is something that I'm, I'm very proud of being able to achieve as well. So this is ultimately then why I freelance is, is because I wanted to travel and making that work was the main goal that I had in mind and is still my, my main goal is to make this work more as I bring in new clients, as I offer new services and branch out into other areas of IT. Not all of the work that I do is cybersecurity. Some of it is AI automation type work as well. Some DevSecOps type stuff, but building up towards these services usually needs a, a level ground of what services you actually want to offer and that actually sell. So starting with something that actually sells and then moving them towards recurring services and then obviously bringing in more clients and rinse repeat that same process is pretty much what I, I show people how to do because this is how I made it work for me. 
Now keep in mind that I was doing freelancing on the side of my job for around five years. I was doing this for a pretty long time to, to build up clients and I wasn't taking it too seriously because obviously I had my main job paying for everything. This was more of a after hours hobby or you know something that I, I wanted to do uh, better than what other people were offering as far as a, a boutique service is concerned. So yeah, if you want to get into IT freelancing or cybersecurity freelancing, automation freelancing, let me know. Hit me up. You can find me on any of the, the channels that I have listed in the description or on my YouTube channel here. And uh, yeah, get into to IT freelancing. It's a pretty good market and it's it seems to be growing still at the moment, which is fantastic for you and for me. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Keep it real out there.